When we have a falling gun, let it fall. Magtech is the only pistol or rifle ammo I use on the range and I recommend them highly. I've seen their manufacturing and quality control firsthand and it's incredible, which is why it always performs reliably and accurately. They are operating at max capacity and cranking out rounds for you to keep your skills sharp. Pick up some Magtech at your local ammo retailer or get it shipped fast at luckygunner.com. If this gun has gone from here to here and I try to grab that, where's my thumb gonna go? It's gonna go right here for the most part. I mean, that's just how lucky we are. If we've already been dumb enough to drop our gun uh, or, or been unlucky enough to drop our gun or whatever, uh, and I'm not saying, because I've seen it happen for, from good shooters. So this kind of stuff happens from time to time. Again, let's take the mental rep right now. Uh, but if we've been unlucky enough that the gun is falling towards the ground, do you think you're gonna be lucky enough not to grab the trigger with your thumb? Probably not, so we let them fall. Okay, the, gun, the modern guns are all drop safety. We can uh, insert the old SIG jokes if we want to, but the guns are safe. They will drop to the ground. They're not gonna go off. It, you know, talk about that just a little bit about, it, you know, in, it, the private citizen gunfight is way different than the law enforcement gunfight, right? Uh, so we talk about, we look the gun into the holster and a lot of times we get the, well, I can't look the gun into the holster because there might be a threat. So here's the thing, before we even start the holster process, Make sure there's no threats. Uh, I mean, we can hold that. We can hold the gun in a, you know, do all of our pew pew pew, and then do our, you know, our scanning or whatever we need to do to con to confirm there's no threats. But before we put the gun away, that's why I really like the idea of the thumb over that deep breath to get me into an administrative mindset, and then get the gun into the holster. Okay. Uh oh. Why did you so, take your fingers because off? Because I'm. End? You were just going to interrupt me. So again, do not take that. So, so did you see that? And, and everybody noticed that, right? So when we come to here and we open up, it, it feels right. And it looks kind of tactical and cool and all that. But the challenge that I always have as, a, as an instructor when we come to the class is those people that handle their guns very nonchalantly. And I, call, and I call that a very nonchalant holstering thing. Let's not do that. We got to stay mentally I want you to be extra all. chalant. Yeah, yeah. Be, be Super chalant, chalant about putting the gun away. AF, all right? Right. Um, but, but, we also see, but we also see that, that nonchalantness in the, uh, in, the, in the draw in a lot of cases is they come out and they're, and they're just holding the gun at, you know, with two fingers or whatever. Uh, this is a deadly weapon. This can hurt anybody in the room, anybody on the range, including ourselves. So get a hold of the thing like it could hurt somebody. You are in control of something that could really hurt somebody, so have control of it. And what we see in so many cases is they just come out, or, or we come out, we do all of our shooting, and then we like, ah, everything is great. And I've seen people holster with two fingers on the gun like this, and you know, and in a lot of cases they're like, oh, I got to get this right, and I'm pointing this thing at myself on purpose. Do you see that? So with a lot of care and a lot of mental presence, thumb over, take that breath, come back, kick the hip out. And to finish answering your question, Matt, I've never seen somebody holster a pistol after a defensive gunfight and then have a bad guy reanimate. And the reason for that is, is your mission as a private citizen is to break contact with deadly threats. If you're still in contact with a deadly threat, don't holster your gun. Okay. If they scramble off and assume room temperature somewhere else, cool. They're gone. You're good. Safely, carefully, reluctantly holster and grease the landing. If, if not, you skedaddle. Right, he stopped right there. I can't stay here and, and not be in the presence of a deadly threat. I'm gone. And I'll call 911 from, you know, as I'm leaving. And hey, meet me at the, the liquor store two blocks down. I'm happy to go back to the scene with a bunch of cops. Uh, and, but again, don't reholster with a deadly threat. Police officers will sometimes have to holster in the presence of somebody who they just had a gun on. But remember, they're carrying a big full-size gun and they're carrying in an offset holster. And they have basically a five gallon bucket to drop that, holster, drop that gun into. It's a much bigger holster that they get to do that to. And it's offset away from their person. So they usually are offset about an inch and a half. So it's a totally different holstering process for them, okay? Uh, so before we go any further, let me talk about our, we, we've got at least one strong side. Two. Who's our strong side Two, folks? two. Okay, yeah. so we've got some strong side folks. Yeah. So it's a very similar process. Is it inside the waistband or outside the waistband? Because those are different. Outside? Outside. Okay, so outside is different. So inside is very similar in that we come back, we pin, we clear the cover garment, we come down and keep the thumb on the body, we tap, and then we go into the holster. 
outside because you're offset a little bit. If you have your thumb pinned to your body and you have to tap on a holster that's out here, the, the person standing next to you is not going to appreciate you pointing a gun at them uh, the entire time, right? So, so we don't want to, we want to pin the thumb as we clear the cover garment, but then all we're going to do is just rock it straight down and in. So we kick our hips out like we get a little bit fancy, right? And we just rock it straight down in and, and you can drop the gun. Typically, uh, you have the back side of that holster. You can drop the, your, your gun into that and it just slides right in nice and easy. You want to listen for that click is really what we want. And again, let me get in here. If we have any backwards pressure, anything, if you're like, oh, that doesn't feel right, you just stop. Like I said, there's no rush to the holster. There's no, if you miss a rep because you had to clean up something uh, or get your jacket or the string from your coat or any of that kind of stuff out of your holster, I would much rather that you miss a rep or you take one off because you're being safe than you get the gun in there and it gets a piece of string in it and it pulls the trigger on you. Okay, does that make sense? So any backwards pressure, we stop and we clear. So when we get done with most of our reps out there and we get ready to clear the line, we're gonna say, are all the guns in the holsters? I don't need any yeses. I, what I want is hands up. We'll ask you to put your hands up so make sure there's no guns in. If you still have a gun out, that's not a problem. Don't rush in and, oh, I gotta get my hands up. No, 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 put it away safely and then get your hands up. If you've got a problem, if you're dealing with something or if somebody just has a gun out uh, and I ask the question or John asks the question, the answer that you can say is no, the guns are not in the holster. That, that's not an emergency. That's not anything that we worry about. We're like, okay, cool. Well, we're going to pause for just a second while everybody's in the gun or in their holster safely. Now we can walk away from the line. We can pick up the gear that we need, all of that kind of stuff. But that's how we do that. Okay. Any questions on safe holster? Perfect. I want to talk briefly about there's a there's a, a bit here in the midst of a gunfight. Remember, we're talking about this little three to five second slice of the worst three to five seconds of your life. Why would I say that's the worst three to five seconds of your life? Your life is at risk right now and you have to get a gun in the fight and stop that threat. It's the worst three to five seconds of your life. Your life has forever changed from that moment. There's no way it's not. The only reason you'd use deadly force is because the alternative is so unmanageable, so the consequences are so great, you can't not. If I have to go to prison for the next 20 years, I'll take it because I have to do what I have to do here in order to survive. I always say, if, you, you know, if you're not willing to go to prison for, what, you know, for using your gun, don't use it. Now I say, wait a minute, that guy's going to kill me. Okay, would I go to prison for 20 years rather than die right now? Yeah, I can still keep in contact with my wife and kids from prison. Now, if a guy's an actual deadly threat, am I going to prison? Nope, I'll be fine. But this is why I don't use guns to defend property, right? That's why I don't shoot people who are, you know, want to steal my car or something like that. If there's no people in it, it's just a car. I'll, I'll, am I willing to go to prison for 20 years for a $500 insurance deductible? No. no. Even on a beautiful Bronco, I'm not going to do it, right? I can buy a new one. The insurance company will get me a new one, okay? Uh, we don't do that. But one of those big things is I have to stay emotionally present then because this is the worst seconds of my life. Somebody's a deadly threat to me. What, are, what emotions am I likely feeling? I'm certainly probably feeling fear. I might cover that fear over with anger and actually we'll talk about anger as a covering emotion to do that. What else might I be feeling? Anxiety. Certainly anxiety, anxiety, what is happening here? Denial. I'm, I'm probably feeling a huge number of emotions and if I let those emotions overwhelm me, I will, I will really struggle. So a lot of times what we do is we put a cover over the top of them and men are usually a little better at this than women at the beginning of anger. Anger is a great covering emotion. Uh, because it can, it can wipe some of that other problems out. However, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, how would I feel in the moment that I know that I need to get a gun out? Scared. Scared. Is scared going to help me perform well? In a, in a perfect world, I knew, okay, it's the worst moments of my life. I've got all the time in the world to prepare for it. I know it's coming. Shooter ready, standby, beep. In, and I know this is a real defensive gunfight. How in a perfect world should I seek to be okay calm confident process focused task focused huh that guy needs to be shot right now and so in a perfect world i'd be saying i want a gun in my hand and i want to see all the sights that i get hit the the, the correct uh, uh speed and accuracy both in full measure and stop this threat that's my perfect world 
Now then, anybody here ever been in a car wreck? Yeah, most of us, a lot of us experienced that. Um, Do you see it coming? So a lot of times we don't see it coming. Bang! We, if we don't see it coming, my, my biggest car wreck, I got ruined by a drunk driver in 2000. I saw it, happen, saw it coming about a nah, split second before it happened. Looked at my rearview mirror. He's right on top of me. Drunk. Hit me from behind. Didn't have a time to do anything. Bang! Woo! <laughs> around and around and around she goes in an 89 Honda CRX, which is like a Coke can on wheels. Um, and so no time to do anything. That. I've been in others where you see it coming. The brakes come on. Oh, no. But in that moment, you either go, oh, what's about to happen? Or you go, whoa, it's time to swerve. It's time to break. It's time to move. And I want to do that. And I'll feel the emotions later. Agreed? That's how you perform best. So same thing here. Emotional fitness then means in a gunfight, I want to be process focused. I want to be action focused. And I want to be present in the moment solving problems. Now, what does that mean for us out here in class? If you can, the best of your ability, I want you to stay 100% present in every rep that we do and be processed focused in it. Every time I draw the gun, I'm focused on the process of making this happen in order to get fast and accurate hits. That will build me confidence in the competence that I have that says, uh-oh, in that moment, this guy's now a deadly threat. Cool, shooter ready. Hey man, I'm fine, I don't wanna fight. I'm gonna get you my wallet, it's chill, bro. Show me your ear, man, show me your ear, man, show me your standby. Okay, let me get you my stuff, beep, process now. Grip, sides, trigger, bang, 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 bang. Oh man, he's gone. Okay, cool. Let me grease this landing. Click. Oh my God, is everyone okay? I'll deal with the other stuff later. So what that means in class here is process focus, in the moment focus, stay present. Now I'm not thinking about what's to come later. So that means when we're, you know, we're going to be writing scores down and stuff like that. I don't care about your score. I don't care about any of that stuff. Let me stay process focused in the moment. Let me stay focused on the task at hand. We're working on grip. Well, wait, we're going to have to do all this other stuff. No, no, no. I'm focused in the moment to stay focused in that second to, as, a, as a path of building emotional fitness that God forbid I have to use all this in the moment of greatest dire need. I can go back to that place, find my happy place again and be process focused. What questions do you have about that? Somebody asked me one question about that. Jeez, I can't even get somebody to ask me one question. Do you feel the switch? Do you feel the switch? I mean, so I've, I, I've never been in a gunfight, so I can't tell you that personally. I can tell you in high stress environments, if you're trained highly, you will respond according to your training. I will tell you that if you're not trained, then you will, you have a high likelihood of freaking out instead and doing that frantic, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Um, we joke about this. How do you know somebody's a pilot? They will tell you unequivocally, okay? Um, I've had three, in, in only 130 hours of flying, I've had three legitimate air, airborne emergencies. And thankfully, every single one of them, I was able to revert to good training. Saw the problem, solved the problem. And then after a while, you go, you know, you get down and people are like, dude, what happened? You're like, yeah, I had this thing. It was the weirdest thing ever. You didn't freak out. There was no time to freak out. I had to solve the stupid problem. And so you just solve the problem and you stay present, right? So... Uh, I've done that in, I've been in a couple of car wrecks uh, and, and been able to stay emotionally present. Nope, I have to solve this problem right now. I've been in one near that almost killed me on a motorcycle. It would have killed me if I didn't solve the problem correctly. Um, you, the human skeleton is just not built to withstand 40 mile an hour collisions with steel. It's just not. <laughs> uh, and so if you can stay emotionally present in that moment, then at, once you get around the moment and you're through it, then you can look back on it and you can go, do you know how close that was, stupid? And then your adrenal glands go squish and you go, I'm going to sit down a minute. It's okay. That's how we want to do things. So from this point forward, we're going to be out there shooting. We're going to have a great time. I want you to be emotionally present during that. And I'm going to remind you of that. Check in with yourself. Can I calm them, the, all the stuff in my mind? Focus here and stay present. Do the thing and just be present here. Okay? So now it's time to go shoot. Yay!